come to the Therapy Corner. Here at the Therapy Corner, we like to educate, illustrate, enlighten, anything having to do with psychology, counseling, therapy, things like that, and touch on research occasionally. Um, and I, I hope you'll enjoy this particular segment because this is the second part of a two-part segment on pornography. And again, as I warned in the first one, please, if you have issues with sexually explicit material or you feel you've been traumatized and you can't listen to this stuff, please don't. Um, but please be aware that there is discussion regarding sexually explicit material in this series, okay? All right, so here again, Mary Jane Allenbaum, PhD, lovely clinical psychologist who works with sex offenders. And model, it is a bit controversial. It's, it makes a lot of sense, but some, some people don't buy it. But, but, but only we need to say at this point, pornography in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with it. It's no. healthy. It's been used by humans since, since time began. Right. Um, it's just because we're clinicians, we're kind of focusing on some of the pathological issues that are currently arising. And, 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 I, and I, I forgot to say that in the beginning. So what, Ole's story about his person at work illustrates exactly what I want to talk about in the satiation issue Sorry. and the behavioral responses. Mm -hmm. So what the research is now telling us is, again, it's a brain issue. Um, people get kind of, you know, like hit on this site and the next thing you know, you're going down the, the path and then pretty soon, this, this is kind of boring, vanilla pornography. It's like, ah, eh, because, because you become habituated to it, right? It's like, oh yeah, well, let's try, oh, oh let's try something a little, what? you know, a little, little variation and then pretty soon, it, with some poor people who get hooked, you're into um, really pathological um, uh, pornography that is really deviant. Right. You know, and that's where we worry because because being because I you know I treat uh, child pornographers, and it's you, I cannot tell you how many men started out looking at porn, got into it went down the garden path and pretty soon take a right turn, a site, something will pop up and then there's the shock. <gasps> and then pretty soon the whole habituation um, response reward mm -hmm. um, cycle that only discuss can take over. And some poor people will become more and more needing more and more intense stimulation. You know, if you think about it, um, uh, you can have access to porn now 24 seven and constantly changing, right? Constantly changing stimuli. And sometimes some people just, it just gets more and more and more um, dysfunctional and dangerous and demeaning and violent. Um, we worry a lot about children watching violent teenagers walking, watching violent violence in general, but violent pornography. So what does that say about their expectations in the real world of what's normal and what's isn't? Got it? <laughs> oh, it just, because in, in my uh, human sexuality class, I was, I was just showing this short video. The, it was a TED talk. This woman was amazing, but, but she, she's funny as hell because she comes out and saying, I love sex. I love sex with younger men and I have sex every chance I can. You know, and then she goes into the whole thing. But she says the problem with pornography is that we instill these sexual scripts mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily true or what most people want. And like you just said, you know, people go towards some kind of more deviant thing. I'll talk about that in a minute because it just triggered another thought. But she says, you know, and she uses the example, excuse me, of um, some men uh, think that uh, women like them to come on their faces. And she makes a big thing about that. And so, so what you end up with is a situation where the girl thinks, oh, I need to do this because he will like it if mm -hmm. I do this. And he's doing it because he thinks I will like to do this. And it all happened because of pornography, because somebody out there gave this idea through some pornographic movie script, whatever, 
that, you know, coming on a woman's face is, is the end thing to do. And it's like, whoa, craziness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so, but she does, and this is a TED talk and it's, it's like, it speaks to exactly what we're talking about today is like, whoa, pornography has some potentially mm -hmm. negative effects. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not saying it's bad, but there are potential negative effects, mm -hmm. okay? I've seen couples where it's enriched their relationship. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to the thing where you were talking about needing more and more. Well, think about how many older couples are sitting there going on board with sex. You know, it's because, well, you know, is there anything besides the missionary position? You know, <laughs> and, and, you know, I said, hey, have you looked at the Kama Sutra lately? Um, <laughs> So yeah, the, the, we, we do, we get used to the same thing over and over and then we want more. Well, my thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're the expert here. Um, the pornography in, industry obviously uh, capitalizes on that because they say, oh, let's do something a little different to captivate our audience. Mm -hmm. And then people think, oh, I saw it on pornography, it must be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that is, I mean, that is, that is the cycle that is so worrisome and you hit it exactly on the head. And, and um, we can talk about it in a minute. So don't let me forget about where it's going to come up in therapy. But, but um, most, the research tells us most males view pornography in a solitary manner mm. um, by themselves starting early and going later and much, with much higher frequency than females. Females generally get into pornography in the context of a relationship because women respond to emotional responses more than behavioral responses, right? Mm -hmm. So within the context of a relationship, well, you know, like just like you're talking, it can be good. It can, be, it can add to a relationship. It can, it can be helpful. On the other hand, younger people whose brains aren't set and whose whose ideas about the world aren't all that clear can see this see behaviors that they would never even contemplate mm -hmm. and assume that that's normative sexual behavior and um i and again from a feminist perspective you know feminism doesn't care for pornography because it dehumanizes and degrades women so other feminists say it empowers women because you're taking control. That's one response. But I think what, what we're talking about, the uh, literally su seduction of teenagers and young, young people into viewing pornography and then more and more de deviant pornography is, is almost always dehumanizing and violent towards women. And, yeah. and and it, it, if I may break in here, sure, that's sure. what it really, really upsets me is another thing where that article uh, does not cause, uh, you know, uh, sex uh, uh, problems or things. It's like, hello, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. all of the earlier research has shown categorically that the viewing mm -hmm. of, you know, violent uh, pornography has caused people, to, uh, men, sorry, men, to I think, oh, well, rape's not such a big deal after all. Let's have less sentence, harsher sentences. And, you know, the woman probably wanted it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hello? And that's just from viewing pornography. It's like, this, this is wrong again. And these were college students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's an extraordinarily... Um, complicated subject that that we're not going to be able to sort all the, all the tributaries out but but again because we're talking primarily to therapists who are probably seeing teenagers and trust me these kids are seeing pornography oh <laughs> or younger younger teenagers mm -hmm. and marital couples so um it goes back to the basic behavioral principles, though, of, of satiation. You know, you see this, you get satiated. It's like you need a little more, a little more to right. stimulate right. you. And, and you have the shock, which increases the adrenaline, which then increases the, the uh, neurotransmitter release. So it becomes, it, it can become 
if not addictive, certainly compulsive. And it can become deviant and harmful. But yeah. I think in therapy, go ahead, go, go, go. Stop there for a minute because I, I, I'm feeling, sorry, a little discomfort here because it seems as though we've been focusing a lot on the negativity. I mean, I try to point out here once in a while how, you know, couples have used it very effectively. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, you know, here, let me give you an example of a positive use that I have seen, okay? I have a client who's on the spectrum. He's mm -hmm. not functioning high enough to really be totally independent, but he, mm -hmm. but he, he, because of his behavior as, you know, being on the autism spectrum, you know, he's 30 years old. He's probably never going to be with a woman for real. Okay. And he's been incredibly frustrated. And one of the things that I talked to him about, oh gosh, this was about three years ago was um, he was wanting his psychiatrist to give him Viagra because he was afraid he wasn't going to be able to perform because of the antidepressants he was on. I said, slow down. I suggested a, a porn site that I know of that has a lot of variety on it. I said, go there, look at that one, see what you think. And that man has been totally satisfied. He still would like to be with a woman for real. Mm -hmm. But one, he found out he can have an erection without Viagra. <laughs> That's a good thing. It was a shock. And two, he can take care of his sexual needs by himself and not feel frustrated. So to me, that that's positive. It's totally positive. You know, and then there are the couples where they view it together. And again, they may have come from sheltered backgrounds or whatever, where they don't understand variety and, you know, different ways of doing things. And it allows them an opportunity to experiment and to do things differently. Mm -hmm. Try some new stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I, yeah, I, I again, because... <laughs> Because I work in the area, I tend to just see the negativity. And the, thank you for pulling me back to the real world of healthy relationships. <laughs> My children are so embarrassed by the things I do. <laughs> so, but but I do want to. We hit on it a bit, but let's let's just in therapy. Um, let's just talk about some of the areas, just like you talked about, where where it can. If you don't mind, I'm going to focus on the negative for a minute. You can be positive, I'll be negative. Okay. Good cop, bad cop. <laughs> Good cop, bad cop. Um, it can interfere with relationships. Um, you'd be amazed how many women don't know how much their husband or their boyfriend is watching porn. You know? And then when they find out, they're like, what? <laughs> what? I'm not enough. You know, you'd rather do that than be with me. It can cause, right? I'm right. sure you've seen that. Oh, yeah. And, and the other part of it is, is for younger people, just like you talked about, they get these kind of, um, it's hard for women because there's the issue of body, body identity and body shaming that comes with not being, having a perfect body. Whereas in, in all in the porn videos, it's models, it's, you know, it's this great body. And the expectations, it trains, just like you talked about, it trains or it exposes younger people to really unrealistic ideas about what is good sex, natural yeah. sex, normal sex. Yeah, I, I, I often pose this question in my human sexuality class in semesters I teach it. I say, how many of you know what a fluffer is? I don't know what's a fluffer. <laughs> a fluffer is here. You, I point out that the, the people in the pornographic movies, they're actors. Yeah. They're acting. Okay. Well, like in any movie, you could be paired up with somebody not that crazy about, doesn't exactly excite me. Well, then they have fluffers. These are people who like, like let's just say I'm, I'm the guy in the movie. And the woman I'm going to do it with just like, mm, don't want to do it. Well, then I have a fluffer, a young lady that maybe really excites me, gets me up so I can do the part. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that, that's a fluffer. A teaser. It's a teaser. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that's funny. Apparently, the uh, porn industry's term for it is fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, funny. but I, I bring it up because, you know, th that's what people forget. Right. They're actors. 
They're actors. They're actors. And they're, this they're is really realistic. Uh -huh. They are. And and like I said, it just it, it gets these unrealistic ideas in the in the heads, especially of younger people, and starts forming just like you talked about in the beginning ideas of what's good sex and what isn't good sex. And and the other thing that's interesting, um, again, I'm going to focus on the negative. I, I'll be okay. back up. The other thing that's interesting is you'd be amazed. No, you wouldn't be amazed because you you folks are out there in the real world. You'd be surprised if you started talking with your colleagues about how many of these young men, and it's almost always young men, um, are suffering from erectile dysfunction. Mm. And that is because we think that is because they have used so much pornography that when they're with somebody real, it's like, uh, uh, yeah. you know, um, and they're used to this kind of polished performance with all of this, some of it just ridiculous, right. some of it really deviant. And um, they're not understa understanding the link that, that that's not real. It's a fantasy. And some of them use some <laughs> addicted or you have such compulsive use of pornography that they masturbate so much that they can't get, get an right. erection, you know, <laughs> which is embarrassing in a young bad, man. Bad, <laughs> bad, really. bad, very bad, you know. <laughs> a lot of the performance anxiety because you're seeing a show. <laughs> exactly, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's performance anxiety. I point this out in my class when it comes yeah. to erectile dysfunction. The yeah. vast majority of it is due to performance anxiety but you yeah. pointed out an interesting thing because i always thought it would be performance anxiety because you see these polished as you said examples of how to have sex and how could i ever be that good mm -hmm. you know or the other part which is interesting i'm glad you pointed that out is looking at pornography and the beauty of the woman and how she's responding and how sexually active she is and then you get a real life partner and it's like, oh, that's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's just sort of very disappointing. So it's, there's two factors that stick out there, I think, uh, in terms of how pornography can create erectile dysfunction. It's really mm -hmm. fascinating. Mm -hmm. it, it is. And it's, a, it's, a, it's more of a problem than we think. And there's another piece to it, too. Which is, which is there's so, if a young man in particular, usually, is so involved in pornography and, and viewing pornography so much and so frequently and so often and with such variety, the real world can't compete with the variety. You know, they see more sex in an evening than in the past now than many of us would experience or know about in a lifetime. So you can see how you can easily become saturated, habituated to, and you need more different, different, and this constant changeover is not real. This is not, this constant stimulation is not what happens in the real world. Yeah. So, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it can, uh, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, that, that's, I, I think we can kind of sum up that part and just saying that, you know, pornography really presents a very false view of how mm -hmm. sex is in the real world. I think so. Yeah, it, it can be as good. Okay. But, you know, the problem is, I think the more you see of it, I don't know, from my perspective, the more you would come to think that, oh, it's like that. Oh, no, it's like that. Oh, no, it's like that. Well, mm -hmm. what's it really like? You know, exactly. exactly. And I just flashed on something. My, my, as I call her, my famous ex-wife, because I talk about her all the time that made her famous. Um, <laughs> She actually was on the trial for John Holmes. And I don't know if you remember John Holmes back in the old pornography days. His, his screen name was Johnny Dong. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, John Holmes, he, he was on trial for, I don't know if it was accessory to murder or murder. It's the uh, Laurel Canyon murders. But his claim to fame was a 12 inch penis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's twice the average. Mm -hmm. It's also way more than you need since the woman's vagina is only three to five inches deep. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what it did was it kept reinforcing here again, negative effect. I'm getting negative now. Negative effect of 
pornography on men because we run around worrying about the size of our penis all the time. Yes. I just had a colleague whose who's client husband went and had a phalloplasty and everybody who has them hates them. They, 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 you know, after they're done, they're, they're sorry they ever had them done. But oh no, he had to have a longer, thicker penis and he got it done. And now he's absolutely miserable, which I could have predicted, but it wasn't my client. You know, uh, you know this obsession and, and it's all because of pornography. Well, not all, but I mean, oh, pornography plays a, can play, can play yeah. a, a big part. I just briefly want to touch on two things. Yes. Uh, um, when you were talking about the fellow at work who, um, in accidentally, again, that's the way it often happens. I think the power of pornography and some of the more deviant pornography, and another time we can talk about child pornography if you're up for it. Um, the power of it is, is that once they get hooked, men, usually men, will take such enormous risks. I mean, who in the name of God is going to be sitting watching child pornography at work and not expect to get caught. It's like, why would you, which to me shows the absolutely, totally addictive nature of the whole oh, or yeah. compulsive yeah. nature of it. Yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to hit on is because just there's some new statistics coming out because of uh, COVID. They're seeing uh, correlations. And again, it's not, and it's correlation, just an association, increased depression, associated with increased pornography use. Now, which came first, you know, locked in the house for a year or boredom, and, sure. and, you know, sure. Sure. but um, it, there is an association. Um, well, if I uh, may, that almost makes sense if you stop and think about it. All right. I'm not, I'm not getting any sex because I can't get out there in the world and have sex. So I'll sit here and have sex with myself. And it's like, oh, but I really miss it. It just, it's like a downward spiral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for the therapist in the, in the group, is I think it's something you need to keep in the back of your mind to be addressing with people is, is that increased pornography use is associated with depression, which came first in the new goods. It is not, interestingly, it's not associated with anxiety. So uh, maybe it's working to be, keep people calm, but um, it's uh, the anxiety uh, comes when they get to go out of the house again. <laughs> when they go get to go out and try and uh, try yeah. and engage in a relationship. The other part is the other part that the educators worry about is that these young younger men, younger children, young and some females, they need to be interacting socially with each other. And negotiating how to establish peer relationships and how to establish partnerships and how to be in the world. And they're not. Yeah. They're not. Um, kids that spend, go home from school and instead of uh, socializing, go in their room and watch porn are not learning the life skills they need. So for us, for us therapists, I think that's what we worry about. And the interference with, with, a, with relationships. Yeah. And... Um, what else, Oli? What, what can we say? Oh, no, no, if I may, I, I need to backtrack a minute because there was a point you made and I, I wanted to say something about that. And that was in terms of the the spouse or domestic partner, whatever, mm -hmm. coming in and going, oh my God, why are you watching porn? This, you know, mm -hmm. am I not enough for you? You know, and again, here, I'm going to be the good cop. Um, the reality is that we have different sex drives. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I tell people, I say, you'd be amazed at how many, couples come in where the woman says I want it more than he does you know mm -hmm. and and from the old stereotype that's crazy right because mm -hmm. men think about sex every six seconds right mm -hmm. well that's not real either mm -hmm. uh, we all have different sex drives and the pornography provides an outlet mm -hmm. so that the frequency you do have together is okay mm -hmm. It can, it can, and I think that's the positive use of uh, pornography, and the thing we need to keep in mind, and um, and and not be well. I mean, not be judgmental. Assume that I, I think what I want to say is you don't have to assume there's something wrong with the relationship because one of the partners is using pornography. It right. Can be it can be a good thing. It can be helpful. Yep. <clears throat> I I I. Did we skip anything? Is there anything we need to? God, I don't know. But I do. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, I think I do want to talk on maybe we can do like a one shot half hour show on on child pornography because 
that one just upsets the hell out of me. So uh, child pornography upsets everybody. Everybody. Well, not the ones watching it. Well, they, they're not happy campers, most of them. No. Um, again, I want you to keep in mind what a huge, huge business it is. You would be. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no. I talk about it in my class and my God, it's a billion dollar industry. Billions, billions. Okay, Mary thanks. Jane, thank you. It's always <laughs> so much fun talking with you. I, I, I ended up talking way more than I planned. No, 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 no. That's your job. That's your job is to make things flow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mary Jane, you take care. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you again for staying with us and watching this second part of the two-part series on pornography with Mary Jane Allen Baum. I hope you enjoyed this segment. Uh, I know I enjoyed talking with Mary Jane. She's always an, a very uh, engaging and knowledgeable person to talk to. Um, again, thank you for watching. Uh, please uh, watch us again. Uh, we have all kinds of things to offer you. And if you have a suggestion, something you'd like us to talk about, please feel free. Let me know. Okay? So this is Oli von Trausingborg saying thank you for watching. Please stay safe. And I look forward to having you on watching our show again. Take care. Bye.